Hello YouTube and welcome to the lesson 8 of After Effects tutorial series. Today we're going to look uh, at something called the Puppet Pen tool which is quite useful for animation and we're going to look more into effects and presets at, um, at, um, on, uh, on the right here. So now let us just start with uh, the Puppet Pen tool and for that let me just create a new composition like always, press OK and then I'm going to um, bring in an image, an image of a worm. Let's say uh, uh, we can do this with any image you want. I suggest that you download uh, or use a PNG transparent image so that we get the animation effect you want. So now I'm going to import that image. I'm going to double click over here and then uh, I have this image called worm.png which I download from, uh, downloaded, uh, downloaded from the Wikia website. So uh, this is a transparent image. Uh, make sure that it is a PNG transparent image so that it will be easier to work with. JPZ works too, but it is not as good as the PNG, uh, PNG transparent image. So I'm going to import this worm um, file. It's quite easier to animate a worm in your fresco. So let me just uh, resize this. All right. So now, as you can see, the worm is very, very stiff. I can, I can, I can just move it from left to right, and that wouldn't really make. Uh, good animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some movement to this worm and maybe um, add in some uh, effects on the top and bottom to make it look good. So now uh, what I want to do is I want the worm very very flexible. I want his body to move and everything else. So I'm going to show you a tool right here at the top right over here uh, that's called the puppet tool. If I were to click on this, click and hold on it, you see three options over here. The first tool I'm going to select is this one. You, this may be the tool that you are actually on. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to select the points where which I want to use for a control. So let me say I want to use the neck, I want to use the body, I want to use the tail. And now I added in three points on the movable point. So now what I can simply do is I can now while I'm selecting the puppet tool I'm going to click on one of these areas which I click. If I were to click on anywhere else it is going to add a new point so don't do that. I'm going to click on the point and move it around and as you can see it actually uh, moves the worm around like quite good. So you can move around the head or move around the tail as it is and look at that. Okay. That looks interesting already. Okay, so I can add in more points just like that. Maybe I want a point on the head just to make it animated like this or maybe on the neck. I can even delete the points if I want to. I can simply click on it and if I were to go over here, if you are just minimize, do expand the effects option and inside the mess you can actually see um, under deform the puppet pin tool. So I can click on these and then I can select the ones I want. So I can uh, click on this one, shift select all of them and delete them all at once. So let me just do that again. Let me select the puppet tool. Uh, one pin on the neck, one pin here, one pin on this side. So what else we can do with this is we can add in the um, animation key or keyframes over here. I'm going to add that in a, li a little bit but, but, but before that we're going to see the other options right here. So let me hold it and select the puppet overlap tool. Before I do that, let me show this. Okay, so now let me see what happens if I do this. If I were to bring the tail around to the head, you can actually see that it doesn't really uh, blend in well. So you can see that the tail is on the top of the head and it actually goes through just like that and it doesn't look natural. So if I want the tail at the top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the puppet overlap tool. I'm going to select the areas which I want to overlap. So I'm just going to click the areas, just click it, it doesn't matter how many points you added in, just click it, the areas which you want on the top. So now I selected the area I wanted. So now I'm going to go over to Puppet Pin Tool and you can see that now my tail is in front of the face just like that. So now you can wipe the face like this. Okay, anyways, so now uh, just like that in the overlap section you can see the overlap um, the ops and the points are here. So I made a lot of points as you can see. So I can select all of them and delete them and it's gone just like that. So let me say if I want the head on the front, uh, let me just go uh, puppets, sorry, not this one. Overlap tool, select the head. 
Okay, then go back and select Puppet Mint Tool and you can see now the tail is at the back. And you can see that it is not perfect over here. So what I can simply do is go to Puppet Overlap Tool and then maybe I want to add this section at the top. So I, if I want the section at the top, I can simply click on it and you can see that it actually arranges itself. So now I'm simply going to delete this all. And you can see if I want the tail in the front, just click it on it over here on the outline and you can see the tail automatically comes uh, in the front. So now this is the power of the puppet pin tool. So let me leave it that way. I want the tail in the front of course. Okay. So now I'm going to select the puppet pin tool and then I can move this around just like that. Okay. So now there's the other tool. That's the puppet stars tool. If I were to add in another point over here, you can actually see that I can squeeze in, squeeze in the face. So let, let me say that I do not, I want the face to be stiff and the other parts remain as it is. So just to show you how it works, I'm going to like squeeze the face a bit. I'm going to go over to the Puppet Stars tool and you can see the outline. Let's say I want this area of the warm uh, very, very still. So I can simply click on it and you can see that the stiffness of that area actually increases. So now if I uh, use that area, that area is not stiff. So I can simply select the areas and uh, make sure that it is not stiff compared to the other areas. So let me go back here and you can already see that now the stiffness of this area actually increases. It does not really wiggle just like that. So there's some wiggling going around over here. So I'm going to select the Puppet Stars tool, click on these. All right, let's click on these. Okay, then go back to Puppet Pin tool and you can see that now this area is stiff uh, and only the areas without the um, step tool, the stiffness tool, um, without the stars tool, it's flexible. So I do not want to add in any for my animation. So let me delete all the overlaps. Let me delete all the stiffness. I want the puppet pin tools, of course. Okay. So now let me just arrange that back up there. And let me say I want a simple animation just like that. So I want to add an animation on this point. And as I select this, you see that it is selected underneath here in the deform panel and you can see that it actually has keyframe. So now I have a keyframe already on set here. I'm going to add one over to the one second. Let me just drag this in and then one over here at uh, two seconds, then one at three seconds, one at four seconds. Oops. Okay. Control Z and one at five seconds. Okay. So now I have a wiggling animation just like that. Okay, so I'm going to select the other tool, do the same, move this around, move this around, move this around, and move this around. Okay, then of course I want this one, and then around over here. You can actually see that there's some movement going on over here. You can animate it however you want. Now, scale to the down, ground, up, down, and up. All right. So I can select all the keyframes that I want. So let me just select all the keyframes that I want to. I can expand these. And then I'm going to add in the A's in option over here. So right click and add in uh, easy A's so that it actually looks better. So now I have a subtle animation on how it looks. So I am going to the front. You can see that this is the animation I have for my warm character. So now I can pre-comp this and maybe I want to add in some background effects and so forth. So I can do that. So now I can go over to the main option. Let me go to, I can simply like reduce the size of this. And the animation is still there as you can see that. So I can move this to the left. Let's say I want uh, it to animate from left to right. Okay. So now left, uh, let me go to position. Let me add in key to position. Uh, for that, I'm pressing the P on my P key on my keyboard. And then I want the scale as well. Okay. I want to animate uh, both of them. Bring it to the side. Drag, it, drag this out. Hold shift so that it uh, it's a straight line. Go to P again. Oh, P is okay. Let me press S. You can see that, uh, I, uh, that I added in a keyframe, so now it actually looks like it is scaling in size as it's coming towards the right. Okay, I can readjust that as well. You can see I have an animation like that. Now, 
I want, uh, let's say, an ASIN over here as well. So right click, ASIN, and on position, click on this one, this one, right click, and DJM assessment, ASIN. Okay, so now I have a very neat animation, just like that. Let me add in the motion blur just to make it look realistic so you can see that there's a bit of a blur over here. No, uh, okay, now there is. That's too much of a blur, I guess. So let me just avoid that for now. Okay, so that's the animation I have. Now what I want to do is I want to add in an animated background maybe. So I can use the effects panel. We can see the animation presets right here. I can use it to come up with a cool background. So up till now we've been using a solid background with, with no animations at all. So now we are going to take things a bit further. Okay, so now I'm going to use this. So let me use uh, this color. Okay, bring it down. And it doesn't look bad. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another, uh, an effect on this layer right here, on the background layer. So I'm going to go over to Animation Presets. That's the background option over here. Let me see what I actually like in this. Oh, silk. Sounds good. Okay, let's see how it actually looks. It actually looks this. All right. So now you can see that the background is animating as well. And you can choose the color and as I added in the background, you can actually see that I have a, uh, I have a set of options to control how the effect actually looks. So I can change the highlight, maybe I'm going to change it. And as you can see that if I change it, the background color changes as well. So I can actually change it to whatever I want, just like that, and make it darker or I can see even change the color if I want to. And these are the shadows. Okay. So now these are the options I actually have, and this is how you can change the uh, the uh, the animation pattern. So now you can see that the uh, edges are from beginning to end. Sometimes the animations for backgrounds aren't until the end, so you really got to check the keyframes. Make sure that they are they are at the beginning and at the end, and check out all the effects so to be sure that they are um, all the way. Uh, to where you want them. So now this is the no, this is one background that I have. Let me just uh, disable this. And to disable this, I can simply click and drag on the effects section over here. Let me see if I will like any other effects right here. So I can maybe uh, use fog lights. Let me see how that use. Uh, it's an effect like this. And as you can see, it comes with its own uh, set of controls that you can uh, play around with. Let me select this one and. This is more of these kind of effects. And these are some of the effects that are already made for us. So we can actually use them as we want. So you, so you can see that we got a squiggly type of animation over here. So anyways, I do not want to use that. I simply want to re-enable this one. Maybe I like this one for some reason. And I want to, I can add in effects on top of the worm as well. So you can add in any effects that you want. So now what I'm going to do is let me just add in other effects. I can pre-comp this and add in a mass effect just like that. So, okay, let me just add in a vignette maybe, like um, insert, let me just like, uh, okay, effects, uh, layer style, in a shadow, in a shadow, okay, let me increase the size of the inner shadow, okay. That gives more of a nice effect for me. All right. So now let me uh, minimize this, select both, and pre-compose them. And let me say warm. And move all attribute into the new composition. That's okay. Okay. So now I can add in some more effects to this as well. So maybe uh, let me go to special effects. There's something called bad TV. Okay. Let me use that. Actually, I use that for the title logo animation. So you can you can recall this from the title animation that you see in the beginning of the tutorial. I actually use bad TV over there. So now you can use this effect if you want. Maybe I want to not use this. So pre let's press Control Z. There's bad TV old. So let me use that. Let me see how that looks. So there's this one and there's bad TV weak. So there's this one. Okay. So crack tiles. So you can use this one. You can also increase the cracking, um, like you can increase the cracks and so forth. You've got night vision and that doesn't do it, motion, right? It gives 
Okay, this I actually like this effect. Looks like a traditional cartoon animation, just like that. Okay, so I can, now it looks like a traditional cartoon animation. So I can increase the size of this, maybe a little bit low. Increase it. So you can make your cartoons more uh, old school, just like that. You can increase the contrast if you want, and then light streak, maybe. Okay, that's not too much. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll decrease that. Let me add in light streak. Play around with this, maybe this is too much opacity, down, no, okay, let me just skip this layer, uh, let me just use this one, uh, this one, expose it, okay, that's too much of it already, so it's more like an effect, a before and an after effect that you can use, but it actually looks cool, so uh, I'm going to use, you can use time offsets over here. I can actually even use multiple of these so I can uh, add it. So you can actually see that there are three effects. But that's actually just too much. Okay, so just two is fine. Yes. Okay. Okay, so now this is what I got. So I'm going to export the footage now. So as you can see that I actually have special effects applied onto it and it got more of a traditional feel right over there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this. Uh, let me export this by going on to project. Let me go to, uh, let's go for uh, composition. I'm not, make sure that you're selecting composition because we are rendering the composition now. Go to file. Uh, let me just save this just, uh, to make sure that it is not it does not get deleted. Let me go to file and let's go to export at render queue. Uh, let me go over to output module and let me select QuickTime format S.264. Okay, that's okay. And then select uh, tutor tube. Let me go over to my tutor tube drive. Tutor uh, tube is there, and then let me go to uh, the lesson 8 folder, that's comp1, save, and enter. And it's done. So let me just navigate around to that folder, let me go to tutor tube, let me go to uh, lesson 8, and that's my movie. So let me open it with VLC player. And that's my animation. So you can see that this is this actually looks okay. So now let me just loop that up. Okay. So now you can see that this is possible with After Effects. So please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe.